Hello everyone, my name is Kyle Clark here at Blackstock Ford in Orangeville, Ontario, Canada. I've been with Blackstock for eight years and a Ford Master Technician for 15. Today we're going to be working on this 2024 Mustang GT installing this Ford Performance Whipple Supercharger. It's going to bring it up to 810 horsepower and 640 pounds of torque. It's one of the first handfuls of Mustangs in Canada to be supercharged. We're gonna have to start by tearing it down and we'll get the bodywork off and the bumper off so we can install this low temp rad. We're gonna go through the kit here, show you what's all involved. It is a pretty in-depth process. Uh, here at Blackstock, we have the tools and the experience to get it done. We'll do a step-by-step -step video here on the install and uh, we'll start with by going over the kit. We've got our kit all laid out here, so we'll go through it first, show you all the components that come in it. This here is the three liter supercharger. Um, it'll be installed and making all our power for us. Rad, GT500 throttle body, electric pump to flow coolant through these rads, full belt system, tensioners, pulleys. We got all the plumbing here and induction system. It does come with billet fuel injectors with GT500 injectors. Set of colder spark plugs that'll have to be gapped. All our bolts, everything's all laid out. We've got our torque wrenches out. And then we have the Whipple programming tool. We start this process here. We'll have to get the original program out of the car and send it to Whipple so they can remap it and then reinstall it into the car when we're finished. Now that we have the program out of there, our next step's gonna be tearing this car down. We're gonna start with the bumper and all the undershields so we can go ahead and install this rad. Now that we've got the bumper off, we've made way for our low temp rad to fit in here. There's some bracketry that'll go in there, but first we still have a few more teardown steps. We're gonna have to drain the engine coolant. We're gonna have to take this cross brace off and we're gonna have to remove the stock intake and all the induction to make way for our supercharger. So now that we've got most of the things taken apart on top here to get this manifold off, at the very beginning of the process, underneath the back seat, there's a fuel driver module that we want to unplug. That way we can relieve as much fuel pressure as possible before we start taking these connections off to reduce fuel spray. Now that we've got the intake off, we're gonna be working around our belt system here, changing our spark plugs, and doing a little bit of modification to the wiring. So we really wanna tape up these intake ports so that no dirt or debris gets down in there. Now that we got the water pump pulley out of the way and that stock belt tensioner out of the way, next step is we're gonna replace the spark plugs. We already have them pre-gapped, so they're ready to go in. And then once we put them in, we're going to torque them down to 128 inch pounds. So now that we've got all four spark plugs in on this bank and they're finger tight, we're going to go back in with our torque wrench and torque them up. Now that we got our spark plugs in and they're all torqued, our next step, we're gonna start working on the front of the engine again here. We're gonna replace this water neck with this one. It has a different angle and we're gonna shorten this hose and that's gonna give us clearance for the supercharger to fit in there. Then we're gonna move the transmission cooler valve to make room for the bracketry and all the new pulleys that are gonna go in to run the supercharger belt. Now that we have our cooling hoses modified and ready to go, we're gonna go ahead and start working on the front of the pulley drive here for the supercharger. We've got a bracket to install and a bunch of pulleys, so we're gonna get onto that now.
Now that we've got the front of the belt system installed there, we're gonna start working on building up this supercharger and all our fuel rails. So step one is putting the fuel rails together with all our new injectors and new fittings. So we'll go ahead and get going there. We wanna install all these O-rings to all our fittings. This is the factory fuel pressure sensor that we reuse. So we're just inserting the injectors into the fuel rails now. The orientation of these is very important for spray pattern and for sitting flush with the new intercooler here that we're putting on. Now that we have the fuel rails put together, we're able to install them onto the supercharger assembly. So we'll bring that over, put these on, and then bolt them to it. Before we install the rails on this, it comes pre-shipped together with a few bolts in it. We still have to take those bolts out, split this in half. We can put it together, and then there's a whole bunch of seals in here that'll have to be installed before the top goes right back onto it. So let's get the top off. And you can see the second intercooler. We're really trying to keep the air cool to produce as much power as possible. And then down in here, you can see there's our supercharger. So now that we have our fuel rails attached to this and the crossover hose in the back, we have put our map sensor in in the front. As we said earlier, when this comes apart, it comes shipped together, but it's not complete. The gaskets and seals have not been installed. So now we go ahead and do that. We've got the big seal for around the outside and then the bigger seal for along the inside. So we'll go and install those. So we got those seals installed on the top. There's also the eight intake seals that'll have to be installed here. And then there's one seal that goes in here. So it's very, very crucial to get all these gaskets and seals installed correctly so the whole thing seals correctly. So before we go ahead and set this supercharger down on top of the engine, our last step here with this is at the very back of it, there's an oil fill and an oil sight and they provide you with the oil that's required to put in here. With all the bearings that are in here and the speed that this is spinning, without oil, it'll stall pretty quick. Now the longer bolts that come in the kit, there's six O-rings that'll be installed on these. These are the ones that are going inside the supercharger, so we have to seal the bolts up as well. And then we'll apply a blue Loctite to these. So we've got the supercharger down now, torqued, two stages, very important. So it goes down evenly and completely. All we've got left mechanically here we're gonna get the supercharger pulley on, the water pump pulley back on, and then we can put the belt on, and then we'll get the roof on it there, and then we're just moving on to our low temp rad and all the plumbing, the electric pump, and then we'll be ready to reassemble and take this thing for a drive. We'll run these bolts in by hand, get them as tight as we can, and then once the belt's installed, it'll hold it so we can torque these. So at this stage, we do have a manual adjusting tensioner down on this end and an automatic one here. So you need two ratchets at the same time to set it because if it's too far down, it won't have room to adjust and if it's too far up, it can make noise. So now that we have the belt in and it's tight, it'll hold this pulley and we can torque our bolts. 
now that we got that part done, the belt done, and are fully torqued, we can go ahead and put the top on this, and then torque this down. And at that point, the major part of the supercharger installation is complete, and then we'll just do all the stuff around it. Now that we have the supercharger installed and that part of the process is complete, we're gonna go ahead and start working on the low temp rad. We've gotta put our bushings in for mounting and then we'll get into mounting the brackets behind the bumper and then installing it. This is the electric coolant pump that'll be mounted on the driver's side frame rail to keep that coolant pumping through the supercharger and the intercooler. We've installed the electric pump and all the plumbing for this car. The next thing is we gotta get power to it. So the kit comes with a fuse and relay kit that directly goes into the fuse box where we'll borrow power, so no cutting and splicing, and then just hooking up our powers and grounds, plugging up to the other end, and then whenever the key's on, that pump will be cycling to move the coolant through the system. So this fuse jumper just goes in here, it keeps the factory fuse, and then allows us to have our key on power. Now we've got the electronic pump in there and all wired, we're ready to start putting in the induction system, we have our Shelby GT500 throttle body, the new intake hose that takes the two filter housings to put it into one. Our filters on these will reuse our factory mass airflow sensors and the factory air boxes. And then that comes to the end of what's included in the kit. We'll get the bumper back on and then we just program it and we're ready to fire it up. All right, now that we have the supercharger installed, the oil's changed, it's got some coolant in it. This is the final step. We've got to program this car with the new engine mapping, with the new throttle body and bigger injectors and that supercharger on, we're gonna have a very different engine profile. Um, and then we've also eliminated the intake manifold runner control. So now this is gonna program the car to realize that those things are missing and to upgrade the software for the new hardware we've installed. When we first started the process, we took the original file out and we sent that away to Whipple. They've emailed us the new one, which we put on the SD card that goes in the tool included with the kit. So now that it's loaded into here, as soon as we turn the key on and plug this in, it'll start its program. So as this tool boots up, it should realize that it's got the software in it and we're gonna go and program it. As you can see here, it's erasing the original file and then now it's rewriting it. Now the tool's updated and it's ready to put the calibration into this vehicle's computer. Now that the programming's all complete, all the codes are cleared, all that's left to do is start it up. All right, we're ready to start, so here it goes.
Well, we're out on our road test here now. So far, it's running great, sounding great. Once we find a spot, we'll do a couple small pulls up to the legal limit and just see how it's going. So here's our first pull. We'll see how it goes. And there we are. That's got a lot of power. As you can see from the drive we just had, this Ford Performance Kit from Whipple runs great, sounds great, and is a whole lot of fun to drive. Here at Blackstock, we want to show you that we do have the experience and the technical ability to do something as in-depth as a job like this, and as well as take care of your simple service needs as we are a full servicing Ford dealership. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I did doing it. You can come visit us in Orangeville at Blackstock Ford or on our website at blackstockford.com. We are the Ford guys that customize.